So let's first start by interpreting our rhythm and then considering what hemodynamic problems that could create. This is rapid and it is also irregular. Next, do I see P waves here? Even if I can convince myself that that might be a P wave, I'm not seeing something consistently that I can say I have a P wave. And so your P wave, remember, indicates your atrial depolarization. What you're actually seeing is this electricity being conducted from the SA node in your right atrium. And so that's what we mean when we say a sinus rhythm, is that it originates here in this sinus node. I don't see P waves. I don't think this is a sinus rhythm. We have just these kind of fine fibrillatory waves, these kind of quivering waves. So that would mean either an atrial fibrillation, or you might have atrial flutter, in which you have these sawtooth waves that are flapping. So I don't have flutter waves. I don't think it's an atrial flutter. I think I have fibrillatory waves, so it might be an atrial fibrillation. Is it a supraventricular tachycardia? In a supraventricular tachycardia, you also don't have discernible P waves, but this rhythm is usually much faster and much more regular. In supraventricular tachycardia, or an SVT, there is an abnormal or an ectopic foci, not so different from how an ectopic pregnancy is a pregnancy where one is not supposed to occur in your body. An ectopic foci is where some tissue in your heart has decided it wants to be the pacemaker cell instead of your SA node. And so it's rapidly firing impulses to your AV node. So it's very rapid and it's very regular. So you see, I have the same distance between each one of these R to R intervals, only about seven seven small boxes between each of these R to R intervals. So that puts this at a rate of about 215. And so, so far, this meets all the elements of atrial fibrillation. Now, how is this affecting my hemodynamics? Is this causing decreased afterload, decreased cardiac output, or decreased systemic vascular resistance? So afterload is essentially the load that comes after your ventricle that the heart must pump against. And so because your left ventricle is pumping against the aorta, the afterload is really synonymous with the pressure in your aorta. And so when you have hypertension, you're going to have an increased afterload. So think of afterload as the workload that the heart has to pump against. Now next, your cardiac output. So there's actually a formula for your cardiac output. Heart rate, times stroke volume, where your stroke volume is the amount of volume ejected with each heartbeat. This is going to calculate out to a volume of blood in liters per minute. So anything that decreases your heart rate or decreases your stroke volume can affect your cardiac output. Then finally, our systemic vascular resistance. This is really an indicator of how constricted or how dilated your peripheral blood vessels are. It is essentially the vasoconstriction or vasodilation in your periphery. If you picture a garden hose and then you put your thumb over it, it sprays really forcefully out. So when your blood vessels in your body constrict, your SVR goes up. When the blood vessels in your body dilate, the SVR goes down. And so, for example, someone who is very dehydrated, their body is attempting to compensate by vasoconstricting. And so in a state of dehydration, your SVR goes up. Whereas in a state with massive widespread vasodilation, like sepsis or burns, your SVR will be very low. And so think of your SVR as vasodilation versus constriction. So now which one of these would atrial fibrillation affect? In AFib, instead of this very controlled, regular stimulation from the SA node, you have got electrical discharges coming from all over the place. And so these are firing rapidly, and only some of these are going to make it through to the ventricles. So that's why we see only intermittent response by the ventricles or your QRS complex. When your heart rate is going this fast, this decreases your filling time, and we have less blood volume leaving the heart with every beat. So even though our heart rate goes up, not by enough to compensate for how much our stroke volume goes down. So we would expect to see a decrease in the amount of blood flow leaving our heart and reaching our tissues. Afterload would be decreased if you had a really low blood pressure and systemic vascular resistance would be decreased if you had vasodilation. So AFib is affecting our filling time, decreasing our stroke volume, and therefore decreasing our cardiac output, and we are correct.